What's going on, everybody? So today I want to talk about a general progression guide, especially for you free-to-play players as we start to enter sort of the end of the early game content. Where should we go next? Dungeons, Dragon Cliff, Tower of Mark. There's a lot of content in the game. So I'm going to give you my thoughts. Let's get into it. All right, so as I mentioned, there's a ton of content in the game and each one of them revolves around different scenarios. For example, there's events for some pieces of content and not events for others. But let's just go through each of the game modes and give you my overall thoughts on each one of them briefly and then dive into sort of what I would prioritize focusing on. And then of course, give you some situations where you might wanna change things up based on the characters that you have. Now, with that being said, let's dive into some of the game modes first on screen here. Um, and that is going to be your talents and your arena. Now in your talents, this is basically um, your Tower of Mark and your arena here, because both of these are progressed by one arena and then two, your Tower of Mark. So arena here is honestly something that you don't, in my opinion, need to focus on at all. Again, this is a free-to-play player's perspective, so if you are a whale or you spend a lot of money, this could change depending on that situation. However, um, it really depends on what type of characters you have. Now, you can push arena as free-to-play. You can design a specific arena comp. However, I think that oftentimes you're just going to want to pick characters that are good for certain other game modes and then fill them into arena and then push up into the level that, you know, kind of what I have. Um, you can see here I'm platinum three. Now that's not top tier or anything. You can see I'm ranked 871, but I am getting an uh, excellent rune and usually I'll push to about top 500. Maybe if I'm lucky, top 200. When it gets to this portion, it's going to be a lot of people who are whales and it's going to be hard to push. So the difference between, you know, top 1000 and maybe top 100 is three shards uh, every week, plus another 150 crystals, which isn't a crazy amount of resources. And it might cost you a ton of resources to invest into arena to even push to that level. So I just don't think that that is worth it. I think that you should be using both advanced arena and arena, just your characters that you're pushing for other game modes, um, and then just do your best in that. Tower of Mark, I view it the same way. Now, some people might disagree with me on this. Now, you can see here I've pushed to floor 19 and I could easily clear floor 19. The difference between floor 19 and then fall, uh, these other ones here, and you can see it in increases by two marks per stage. Um, later on, I assume it's going to push up to three marks per stage. You can see here from uh, early on, you can go and see it's like one mark. So maybe it pushes up to three marks per stage later on which means that down here it might be you know at that 60 70 mark and then you get that 25 mythic shards from clearing floor 30 which is very very impactful however here's the thing with the tower of marks here you really really can't be focusing on directly this until you've gone ahead and gotten your gear and all this other stuff because you'll need to supplement these characters themselves with the gear and so in my opinion you should not be focusing on this and just use whatever you have to push as far as you possibly can and then farm up for the characters that you're going to be pushing the furthest in your tower of mark and what i mean by that is for example if i have several force characters which i do um i have melia i have zia i have liz i have lester i have Chino, Hardak, Holder, um, Eden, all these characters that are going to be useful potentially in the Tower of Force here, um, which is very, very important. So I absolutely want to go ahead and farm these with my keys to go ahead and buff them up. The one-time rewards are also very solid, um, to be honest, but you really don't want to focus on these. You want to build characters for other game modes, and I'll get into those in just a moment. We also have the emblem challenge. This is not something that you necessarily need to focus on. Again, you can kind of win it just by accident with the characters you're already awakening, generally speaking. Um, like if you're leveling up, like I say, Reeves or Holder or, or Malia, all those characters um, are very, very good. Liz is a really nice option as well. Um, Faction Abyss. Again, you do not need to focus on, in my opinion, the Faction Abyss until much later. These are later tiered game modes because they are quite difficult and you're going to need to put together certain factions. Again, there's a lot of content in this game, uh, but the one-time rewards don't really get good until much later on. And so this is when you can start to afford to build specific teams for each faction. Again, something that is much later on. We have the Dragon Cliff, which is a specific dungeon for farming food. This is something that I think is actually really, really heavily focus towards the early game, meaning once you get later on in the game, you're going to need less food and more gear. Early on in the game, you're going to need more food, um, not necessarily less gear, but your gear is going to be less quality. So the 
more focus you put in farming awakens, the better you can push into dungeons, and then you can go in and farm better gear, which saves you kind of that middle ground. Um, then we have the guild boss here. Guild boss is actually really, really impactful and something that I think most people should be focusing on early game. And the reason for this is it's going to give you a steady supply of both forge materials and shards, which will boost your events, which will come back and give you more shards, more materials, and everything like that. Anything that has to do with events, um, generally speaking, is going to be one of the more valuable things to focus on, with the exception of Arena, in my opinion, because you can go ahead and finish off that whole event, regardless of if you're, you know, Platinum or Gold, you can usually finish off the event free to play. Now, the only thing with Guild Boss here, you can see I have 34 million damage. I only have two charges because I'm free to play. If you happen to buy the pass, you can go ahead and get that extra charge, which will put me um, around that uh, sort of like 51 million mark, which is very, very high damage. Uh, and I would be able to get to the third tier of the guild boss number three here, which is gonna give me a really high chance for a shard anyways. And I can't even push to that because my guild is relatively new. So we're trying to get people active and pushing the guild boss. If you're in a situation like I am, don't even bother building for guild boss because just build out your units and you'll kind of improve your guild boss squad. Especially if you don't have HP burners, that's, or like dot effects, those are gonna be the main DPS for guild boss in here. Um, at least from what I found, the HP burn is just absolutely massive. So push it up until the point where you can get maximum rewards. And after that, it doesn't really matter. Then we have the last type of game mode uh, that's really, really impactful uh, besides like Brave Trial and Space Temple, which are a little bit different. Brave Trial is kind of like a mini arena type game mode um, where you're fighting different squads and everything like that. But really the last game mode here is going to be your Dwarven Ruins and all the different dungeons. Now, this is where I think people should be focusing on after you've gotten your fodder and gotten your dragon cliff, you know, boosted up. So first off, um, let's talk about all the different dungeons here and everything like that. So we have like Ifrit, Gwyneth, Rum, uh, Negia, Growlin, and Marius. I think that in general speaking, your Ifrit, Gwyneth, Rum, these three equipment dungeons are going to be more important then running uh, your class artifacts, your mark artifacts, and faction artifacts. The reason for this is these are going to be much more specific towards certain characters and harder to get what you want versus the equipment, which can be much more general. And of course, you can always craft these into other sets. Um, speaking of, you have the forge, which is based on events. And in order to push events, you need to farm equipment and artifacts. Uh, so artifacts can't necessarily be ignored most of the time, depending on how far you've pushed, right? You really want to push these up until the point where you can start farming like six star gear pieces because the difference between points earned from farming lower stages to the higher stages and the amount of energy you save is actually big. The more you push your dungeons, the faster you get your events done, which translates to more resources gained in your overall account. Therefore, dungeons should be one of the first things you prioritize simply for the fact that it's going to progress your events further, gonna progress your characters further. However, before dungeons, you wanna focus on Awaken. So I'll go ahead and just go through the progression guide here. But generally speaking, all these dungeons are actually really impactful, especially Marius here early game um, and uh, Growlin to get these extra scrolls and extra eggs. It's actually a really nice way. If you invest, let's say, um, some resources to build out Growlin and then maybe um, something that you're gonna go, or Marius here, and something that you're gonna go ahead and build out for this dungeon might help you in another area. This is actually probably worth doing because you'll get some return on investment there. But even more so than that, let's talk about the overall progression here because I've talked about briefly all these different game modes. In my opinion, you should start off the game Focus on your campaign. Obviously, this is kind of the first thing that everyone focuses on. The reason for this is it's going to go ahead and get you your one-time rewards with some six-star pieces of gear, legendary gear. It's actually in some really solid sets like the uh, Bloodthirsty set, the Feather set, which are both extremely, extremely viable. Um, and then later on, when you go ahead and start to get some uh, legendary scrolls, and then eventually Catherine, which is very, very impactful, although that's going to be a long time in the future. Also, it's going to go ahead and progress your auto drop rewards, which is very, very important for your just idle type gameplay. You really want to get to level 12, which is a lot of stars, but level 12 is going to start dropping you epic characters and getting that epic character is a big, big difference. If you just keep this in mind. Um, you can see here, if you were to drop an epic character, that's like dropping six different elites. It's not going to happen often, but it is going to help you get extra gold, extra XP, um, extra fodder, which is all very, very important, and it's completely idle. So campaign's number one priority. After campaign, you're going to want to get your arena in order. I um, mean, the reason why I say arena in order and not focus on arena is because 
most people when they're pushing campaign you can use that exact squad in arena to go ahead and push further um, and then just auto your way through again if you want to manual it you could probably push even further but you just need a squad that's good enough to go ahead and get you enough points to cap out the arena um event and then also preferably get you in a position where you're in platinum three platinum two and uh you can just constantly farm it and not worry about it but you are getting really nice points especially when you get to platinum three platinum two people really do put some one person defenses on and so you generally you can just farm through it even if you don't have a defense you can see here i have a one person defense myself which allows me to farm it which is very very important for those people that don't have enough time in the game you can focus on it and you want to it's not a bad idea because it's going to progress your talents after your arena and you have that in order not necessarily focusing on it the third thing you're going to want to do is focus on fodder acquisition part of that was campaign the other part of that is dragon cliffs um and honestly uh, dwarven runes this is a little bit of an awkward conversation in terms of this because um dwarven ruins kind of side helps you with fodder acquisition and the reason for this is because you're going to want to push the events and do the equipment dungeons however by pushing the equipment dungeons and investing resources in them you use yet less energy to finish those events which gives you more fodder and more energy to use on fodder acquisition so it kind of helps you everything that you do in this game helps you across all game modes but dragon cliff making sure you have teams for this um or you know maybe if you are deciding do i awaken this character or awaken this character this one's going to help me more in dragon cliff but this one's going to help me more in i don't know let's say arena you're going to want to focus on the one that helps you in dragon cliff because this is going to be the best ways to acquire fodder and that's going to be your main bottleneck as a free-to-play player is getting enough fodder to awaken your units it's a very slow going process after the first initial couple of weeks after your dragon cliff i should have mentioned uh guild boss is kind of in this situation where it's like arena where it's kind of the second game mode i would kind of focus on and the reason for this is it depends on what your guild is at again mine's locked i can't do level three so i'm forced to do level two which means i don't want to focus on it at all because i already capped out the rewards and i there's no reason for me to do it actually i probably should have split this um but between level two and level one and once i get to level three uh, i can be doing level three and level two most likely once i get to that point so you want to go ahead and fill in as much as you possibly can do in terms of your guild boss so that you can get as many rewards as possible very very important that you do that and that's super super important and then we have the emblem challenge the faction abyss and the tower of mark that's kind of left these are the game modes um well emblem challenge i should mention before i jump to the other ones this is not a very important one i'll say don't really focus on this one because you'll get it on accident like this is something that you'll get naturally by farming up characters that you've already awakened once you've awakened your characters you'll easily be able to finish this game mode pretty much um most of the time at least this is not something that you necessarily need to build someone for this game mode specifically the other two faction abyss, abyss and tower of mark are very specified game modes tower of mark pretty specific but faction abyss even more so because you only have so many characters to choose from um, and this is divided up the game into quarters essentially and this is dividing up the game into tenths which is very very important to note now it's not to say that these aren't necessarily meant to be focused on but to, in my opinion this should be done after you've already pushed your dungeons to a reasonable stage and in my opinion you should at least get to stage 26 to guarantee five star equipment drops from these game modes before you even think about building characters for tower of mark for faction abyss and this is why i say to a lot of people you should feed that character and they'll counter with but they're good in tower of mark they're good in faction abyss well i wouldn't disagree with you and if you're worried about not being able to build a team for those game modes maybe you should keep that character however in my opinion there's a lot of characters that are viable for these game modes some of course are better than others but i will probably acquire them anyways later on in the game it's going to be a while until i actually can even push for these game modes i have to push for dwarven ruins and dragon cliff first to be even awaken my units again i can't use those characters that are good for tower of mark or faction abyss until i awaken them and gear them properly but i can't do that really unless i have steady fodder income and gear income so gear and fodder should be your number one priority following that up with tower of mark and faction abyss regardless even pushing tower of mark and faction abyss the rewards are not that great um obviously the faction abyss I, I should kind of rephrase that the faction abyss 
the rewards are decent but you can kind of focus on one faction especially if you have a lot of really strong characters in that faction dragon tribe is a great one because you have whim you have melia you have hisanya granted those are two legendaries so that's not really a free-to-play statement but focusing on one faction you can get the aura requirements you just can't upgrade them that much but you can get the auras from this which is nice and can do some really solid things but the tower of mark just improves your stats overall um, for certain marks and at the end of the day it's going to be a huge and long grind and so the more value you'll get is from focusing on equipment and gear a lot of these early upgrades are very very quickly done after you get to that like level 10 mark which i'm at or level you know let's say 15 it starts to cost a lot of mark upgrades to go ahead and upgrade which is going to push it even further and eventually this just caps out i'm not sure where the marks go afterwards so all your value from pushing into tower of mark is kind of gone at that point so eventually you'll fill it out now granted that's not an excuse to not push it but it's something that you should do very very late on in the game and really you're looking for two things you're looking for these myth mythic shards here for the first clear and you're also looking for the catherines later on that's when you're really really trying to get into tower of mark it's very very important um this first one 240 marks is actually not easy to acquire uh, especially if you are trying to focus on you know actually building up your characters first so super super important honestly again as i mentioned the thing that you'll want to look for in these tower mark is to get that first floor 30 clear to get your first mythic which is very very nice um, or even your second or third mythic depending on when you're clearing these things so there you go there's my thoughts on overall in the game mode again you're free to disagree um, on certain parts of the game some people might argue hey i think tower mark is extremely important uh, again i would argue what i have done in that a lot of the other resources in the game are going to be more viable across the board and will help you in turn push tower of mark so hopefully that helps in a progression guide i obviously will be making certain guides for certain pieces of content but since we're all mostly in the early game if you're free to play you really really can't be specifying your teams at the moment for certain content and you're just getting into that sphere so i figured general progression guide is going to be a little better because you can kind of focus on certain game modes rather than specific teams which is kind of what again a lot of people kind of fall into early on so again hopefully this helps and if it did leave a sub drop a like on the video and i'll see you for the next one